welcome back to my channel. So I thought I'd do a little bit of a different video today because I've had a few requests to do more chatty videos and lifestyle things and stuff like that. So I, and I do my Sunday Q and A's every Sunday on Instagram where people ask me a lot about life advice especially when it comes to relationships and I think it's just become, I don't know, I like, I, I don't feel like I'm qualified to do that, but I definitely feel like I've had a lot of experiences that I feel if I could share with people and me, make things a little bit easier for them to deal with. So with that in mind, I thought it might be quite a nice idea to do a video of advice that I would give to my younger self. Cause I think, you know what, there's a lot of things that I went through when I was younger and I didn't really, I don't know, it would have been nice to have had somebody to kind of like look up to and like talk to about certain things. And there's things that like, I'm so close with my mum. We are very, very, very close and I'm really lucky, but there are certain things that like, you can't really always talk to your mum about and things like that. So yeah, I feel it'd be nice to kind of go back and I mean, there's things that your mum just doesn't really always understand. So, and also when it's your mother, there are things that you still, like you feel like you kind of have to rebel against things and there's things they're not gonna approve of and sometimes you get high off that. So they're not always at the, even though like you can go to them for advice and always who you're gonna take advice from because they're also like an authority figure. Okay, so let's first start with fashion. Okay, so when it comes to fashion, I went through a really, gothy emo phase when I was probably 13. I think this was all Avril Lavigne's fault because she got like really big and like she was all this skater girl style and this naturally fed on to going down the gothy emo route with huge chunky big metal encrusted boots. Now I honestly don't necessarily regret, I think why like dressing that way definitely led me into being quite creative more so creative and more into my fashion because I did it because I wanted to stand out a little bit and I did it because I wanted to do something a little bit different. Granted, my fashion isn't exactly different now, but I just think it's nice to have that little element of spice. But I would probably say maybe keep it a little bit more toned down just because it really, really honestly cringes me out when I think back to how far gone I went into this whole era. Like, I think people were actually a little bit afraid of me. Okay, let's talk about beauty. Okay, so advice to my younger self in the beauty realms would be do not cut your hair when that girl says to you, oh my God, so, so when I, I got chicken pox at, on the first day of my new school going into secondary school and I only knew two of the people at the school so it was a really scary thing anyway having to start a new school not really knowing anybody and then I got chicken pox and then I had to have two weeks off and then because it was really bad I had terrible terrible scarring all over my face um, my parents made me go back after two weeks because they were like you can't miss any more school and I wanted a bit more time to recover and let my face heal and get a bit more confidence back but they were like nope off to school you go which I get kind of got to do I'm missing out here but I remember this girl turned around to me in the queue for food and she was laughing at me and I was just said to her I was like oh you know why are you laughing and she was staring just laughing at me and I was just like why are you laughing at me and she said because you're so ugly and I was just like I didn't know what to say and she was like look at all those ugly craters in your face you're so ugly and she was just like giggling away and laughing then after that she also I had really really naturally long hair and I really liked it like having long hair and I dyed it dark and then I think it was like a dark brown instead of the medium brown it was and she said to me she was like laughing at me and she was like oh your hair's so long and ratty you look like that girl from The Ring that film The Ring that Samara chick and I went and cut it to probably a little bit shorter than this length is here and then had all the layers put in in the world. I'm not sure if anyone who is my age, I mean, I'm pretty sure we all went through that stage where we all cut our hair and all had that lovely long hair and we cut it into choppy layers and it never really grew back again properly after that because it was the same time that we also got into hair straighteners and that was just sort of like killing our hair growth. So. Yeah, I would go back and say, do not listen to that horrible, horrible, horrible girl who was mean to you several times 
and don't cut your hair keep it long maybe also don't dye it dark brown just maybe like a slightly darker brown but yeah and i would just tell myself to not go back and do that beauty wise also then kind of taking things back up to maybe my 20s in regards to beauty i would say i would tell myself definitely to not go overboard on the lip fillers i mean i remember if you guys have been subscribed to me for quite some time you will remember when my lip fillers were really big and really bad so the reason why i kind of went a little bit overboard with my fillers is for a couple reasons one was the second time i had it done i went somewhere quite cheap and they botched it a bit and there was a few lumps so then when i went somewhere else they gave me the option of either dissolving it or they were like, we can kind of work around the problem. I should have dissolved it then and there and just started afresh, but I was like, go around the problem. So when we went around the problem, it then kind of, kind of created more problems. And not only that, constantly going and getting these things done, I mean, it kind of, like, it made, it did make my confidence grow. It made my confidence grow. Like, I dealt with bullying when I was younger and I was told that I was ugly. So these things made me feel better about myself. But then I stopped being able to see myself. Like, because you see yourself every single day in the mirror. You see yourself every day. So you get used to what you're seeing. You can't necessarily see these big changes happening that other people can see because you're so used to your reflection. So I kind of stopped seeing myself for what I really was. And I had gone like obviously gone i went too far with it and when i really realized that i had this really sinking moment and then that's when i booked in to go see dr esho and get them dissolved and redone i have had them done several times since but for me it was a bit of a wake-up call with getting these kind of treatments and how easy it is to fall into these habits so i think if i would go back and tell myself again i would say never go somewhere cheap always go to a doctor and I remember looking at Dr. Esho from the start and I was like oh, I really want to go to him but he's really expensive compared to other people and he has a two month wait list. I wish I had just stuck with him and gone with him from the first place and then I never would have had to have gone through that awkward stage of like having these ridiculously like big misshapen lips like I don't realize how bad they were I thought I looked good I felt good which is ridiculous, which is crazy. So I would definitely go back and tell myself to just go down a more professional route. If they've gone wrong, dissolve them and just get them redone. Honestly, when I dissolved them, I had to have two weeks without lip fillers and from going from how big they were to how small they were, like was so difficult. I had absolutely no confidence in those two, two weeks, but it was really necessary and it was quite a healing process because it actually made me it, at first when I dissolved them and people were replying to my Instagram stories like, oh my god, you look so much better. I was so upset and so offended. I was like, wow, like, what the hell? Like, How is this possible? I look awful. Like, you know, why are they not seeing what I see? But why was I not seeing what they saw? And after like, you know, 10 days and stuff, I was, I, I thought I looked better with out the lip fillers and it took a little while to get that in my head but i was like wow i look so much better i look more natural i've learned I've, i you know i learned my lesson from that and i really hope i never cease to see myself for what i really am i think living in this kind of instagram bubble and social media world it's really weird like i there were issues that i developed with the way that i look that i didn't realize i had until i started doing youtube videos so i wasn't used to you see yourself you look in the mirror and you look at your, your face and you're like yeah i look great today film a video for youtube and then you're editing it and then you're like wow like oh my god i hate this about my face i hate that about my face i hate this this and this and that's one thing that led me to getting braces and when you're constantly like you know especially in today's world everyone's on snapchat we're all on instagram stories we're we're looking at our faces all the time it's really easy to pick faults so i would like to go back and give myself the advice of don't get too caught up in these kind of things and just don't go overboard with what you're doing to your face you've only got one face you don't want to mess with it and you don't want to fuck it up like i'm not anti getting treatments done like botox fillers if that's what you want to do do it like i've i, I still i still have, i've had botox i've had fillers i d like like whatever makes you feel good but you need to keep check of yourself so that's an advice i definitely give to my younger self don't go overboard okay so health and fitness 
I need to be straight up. I am not a naturally sporty person. For me, I do train a lot now. I train usually five days a week. I do co-box and I have two personal training sessions a week. This is something and like learning to be active and fit and healthy has never come naturally to me. I was a chubby child, a very chubby child. I ate a lot and it showed. It is what it is. So, and I was, I was never good at sports. I hated sports, I hated being active. I was definitely more the kind of stay in and do art kind of person. Like, I was a creative kind, not a active kind. So, when it comes to like health and fitness, it never really came easy to me as being a grown up. And I think I would probably say, advice to my younger self would be to try and get into it a little bit sooner. So I did, I know Joe Wicks's 90 day plan gets a lot of criticism now, but I did do that. And I did genuinely find that it really helped. It was the first time it really got me into, like I was actually into fitness and I did it all at home. I just had a set of weights and I followed his like plans and workouts. And I think there's obviously a lot more options now available. So I'd say definitely like work on a plan, focus yourself, but also don't beat yourself up about the progress that you make. Like, you know, you're not gonna be perfect. Everything is a journey and to focus on the journey and what you're learning rather than focusing on getting results. Like the results, they come with it. Like the more you focus on the results, the more obsessed you get, the more guilty you feel, the more you beat yourself up for not getting the results when you want. Try, don't be afraid to try new things. I, for me, I used to be, I mean, I'm still a very anxious person. And I remember I was dating a guy back when I was 22 and he was eight years older than me. And I remember when he said to me, he was really, he was really active and really sporty. And he said to me, he was like, oh, I really think you should start going to the gym. And I was like, oh. like, I was so upset. I got really upset by it because I thought he was basically saying that I need to work out more, hint, hint, you've put on weight. Like, you know, I don't find you attractive. And then I started to get really upset. And he was like, no, 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 I mean, he was like, you struggle to sleep at night you're so anxious and pent up and you have a lot of energy that you can't like you know and like emotion and frustration he was like and if you trained and exercise in the day it would help you sleep better and i uh, me being the defensive person i was thinking he just wants me to lose weight i was like no blah, 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 blah. i just feel don't feel confident enough i wish i had just taken his advice sooner because as soon as i started exercising i started sleeping better i felt happier within myself and it, I didn't even notice it. I just would go to sleep and it'd be so much easier because it was just My body was just like ready for it and my it stopped me like, I used to stay up for hours and hours My mind would just keep me going for hours definitely also say it's always worth booking a session with a personal trainer or asking them in the gym I'm quite shy. I can like I'm not shy, but I'm I'm shy when I'm out of my comfort zone and the gym is not somewhere that I necessarily really felt that comfortable. So to go up to somebody who works there and say, hey, can you just show me how to use this? Can be quite a difficult thing for me. And I would just push myself to just take that plunge and just do it. And it would just help you a lot more. Okay, relationships and dating. Now this one is a big one. I really feel like I should probably do a whole video on this. Probably as an individual thing because I've learned so much. Like I have, I've admittedly had a lot of boyfriends, like not necessarily serious ones. I've never, I've only had a long time, but I've, I haven't had anything really that longer than a year to 18 months. But, and I only ever would stay single for probably maximum six months between relationships. When I was more down the age of 17, 18, there was definitely a bit of crossover there, which is really bad, something I definitely wouldn't do now. These things happen, exactly, you learn from it. But I think my main bit of advice, granted I know you have to make mistakes to learn from them and that's one thing that I'll touch on later. But I would tell myself to stop playing it so cool with these guys and stop trying to like be what, they, what I think that they want me to be. And this is something I honestly have only really got the hang of in the past few years i would be in relation and i think it's something that you know every like dating website is all like oh play it cool you need to play it cool like you know you're texting a guy and your friends like oh just play it cool like don't text back for a day or something or like you know 
I remember giving this girl advice because she said to me, she was like, oh, I've been dating a guy, we've been dating for a few weeks and I want to make it exclusive and he, I don't think he wants to and I was just like, oh my God, like you're, you're, you're acting like, I remember we were all quite drunk and I just met this girl at an event and I was like, you're acting like a complete psycho, just play it cool, act like you don't care, like, you know, you're going to push him away if you start acting like this and you know like if you want him to like you then you've got to like you know play it cool like, act like you, you're not that bothered by it like you know like he's gonna think you're a psycho whoa what kind of like ingrained misogyny is this like the whole like idea of a psycho girlfriend a lot of the time i wrote a blog post about that i'm gonna put the link below the whole idea of a psycho girlfriend unless you literally are like psycho like stabbing people but guys call girls psychos as a form of gaslighting they will do it in order to get you to make you feel crazy and to get you to stop doing a behavior that they don't like and often they don't like it because it means that they're not getting their own way it's a very manipulative tactic so the fact that i was then like oh my god he's gonna think you're a psycho it's just like ingrained misogyny it's like ingrained i am part of the problem here and you know what realistically this girl she could have turned around and had this conversation with this guy and been like, I really like you. I want to be exclusive. Do you want to be exclusive? What do you want? Where is your head at? He could have turned around and been like, whoa, you're coming on too strong. That's not what I want. Let's just go with the flow and see what happens. She has then got her answer. He might think she looks like a psycho, but he's probably not the right person for her. You need to find somebody who gives you what you want in a relationship and... Granted, you know what, going in first date and being like, oh, like, are you seeing anyone else? Like, do you want to, like, you know, be exclusive? Yeah, okay, I think we all know that, like, there is a, a that is going to be a bit much. I think playing it cool is, like, honestly so damaging. I also wrote a blog post about this. Uh, it was, it's probably my most read and most shared blog post ever. But kind of to summarise... There is a passage in Gone Girl about the cool girl and how it's just this construct and how the cool girl is the kind of girl who like like drinks beer and like is going to strip clubs and she is this whole fantasy that guys like she doesn't she's she's so cool she doesn't have these like emotions she's not like demanding she lets her boyfriend or lover do whatever the hell they want to do and like I used to do that and actually the only thing that does is it makes you a complete fucking doormat because you're playing it so cool, you're completely holding back on your emotions and holding them in and what you really feel. I think you've got to learn like good timing and when best to talk about your emotions for sure. But honestly, playing it cool, you're, you're, you're just playing yourself because you're not being true to yourself. Like I have been in relationships where I have acted so unbothered by things and so non-hurt by guys being like talking to me like shit and being like quite mean and making jokes at my expense that really hurt my feelings and I'd be like ah, I'm funny <laughs> but actually they really hurt me and had I stood up to, up to them would they have liked it like would they have liked it they'd probably been like oh you're being so sensitive like oh it's just a joke you can't take a joke does that matter does that matter? No, because that person wasn't right for me. You shouldn't have to play it cool with the person that is right for you. You only play it cool with people that, you know, you're, you're tricking yourself. You're, you're getting them to fall for a version of you which is watered down and which doesn't exist because you're not being yourself. So I think, you know, if someone can't take you for who you are, then they're not, they're not the right person for you. I just wish I knew that sooner. And I get it, like we all want to be liked by somebody. We all want to be desired by somebody. So sometimes we don't even notice the fact that we're like molding ourselves into this like watered down version, which is more palatable to this guy. But if you're being somebody that you're not, it's never gonna work out the way that you want it to be. So my advice to my younger self would be don't do that. Sex, okay, let's talk about sex. So when it comes to sex, like I, I think I'm probably gonna do more in depth one in this as well. So I admittedly have been, mum, please don't watch this bit. Um, admittedly, I, for years, apart from when I first started getting, being sexually active, 
when I first started being sexually active, I hadn't been sexually active with anybody else. So I hadn't, I didn't have sex with this guy, but he was my first sort of sexual, I had, I had had a bit of a sexual experience beforehand, but I felt really like uncomfortable nerves and I actually nearly threw up. So I was really anxious about it. And then my second time was with a boyfriend that I felt a lot more secure with and it felt a lot more like natural and happy. And because I hadn't had many sexual experiences, it was really nice for me and I had no pressure and he I knew he hadn't really done much either so for us it was actually really nice we're just exploring each other's bodies and you're not constantly thinking like am I doing this right does he like that like you know you're just enjoying it with no pressure of any like no external pressures and thoughts and then after that I found that as I got a little bit older and had more boyfriends and things like that and got exposed to different kinds of people um different kinds of pornography I found myself forgetting about my own pleasure and just performing in the bedroom just in order for like guys to like me more it goes back to being a cool girl like i wanted to be the person i thought they wanted me to be and that involved being a great shag and actually that sex was all really crap because i never had an orgasm like from them because i was always faking it because i was there like oh like i don't want them to get bored and think that i take too long and also because i was there like i i, I don't want to hurt their ego i always put their pleasure and their enjoyment above my own so one thing i've learned about sex in the past few years is how important communication is and how important your own pleasure is and finding out what you like so masturbation and sex toys and finding out what your own pleasure is like and also like i'm gonna link you to my friend poppy's she actually runs her own sex toy website it's really great i'm gonna link you to a, a post that she did on instagram if anyone who's looking for how to sort of ask their partner to do different things in the bedroom without like you know offending them because i've been there i've been like oh babe can you do this as well whilst doing that and then they got really like snappy at me and was like i'm warming up to that and i was thinking i'm already warm so yeah i like i know it can be a really difficult thing and you're lying there and you're thinking should i say it should i say it should i say it should i say it because it really isn't doing it for you but yes you should say it the orgasm gap exists i think in heterosexual couples, women orgasm 63% of the time compared to men or like who have orgasms like I think it's like 94% of the time. That's like a 30% difference. So yeah, I think female pleasure is super important and something we really need to focus a lot more on. And I'll link to my friend's post about it. So yeah, that is another thing, I, another bit of advice I'd give to my younger self. Okay, work and school. I really want to touch on this one in a separate video because I think it would be really important. I think it's actually, there are so many lessons that I've learned from like fucking up essentially, which actually leads me on to sort of the main takeaway from this. I think the, the one big piece of advice that I would give myself, like the whole of like growing up, being a teenager, being a kid, being in my early twenties is that not to be so afraid of failure. So I love, Elizabeth Day's book and podcast, How to Fail. The episode with Camilla Thurlow from Love Island is honestly one of the most amazing podcasts I've listened to. Listening to Camilla talk was like, honestly, listening to my post-therapy self talking about things. But she was like saying things like far more eloquently than I ever could. She was amazing. And I, and they, they speak about the fear of failure and how you don't want to, you know, this pressure to be perfect and to not disappoint not only others, but yourself. And actually the most, you can't succeed without failure really because you have to, you learn so much. Every failure you make, you learn something from it, whether it's relationships, whether it is, you know, in the bedroom, whether it is in school, whether it's by getting bad lip fillers. So I think the main takeaway is this, this overarches everything that I've said. Everything I've said, like the advice I'd give to my younger self is based on my failures. So you have to fail in order to succeed a lot of the time so i think i would just tell myself to not beat myself up so much for failure and if you can draw obviously we will feel disappointed when we we fail obviously because we haven't got what we achieved to do but by sitting there and like moaning and like in like wallowing in it we're never going to get anywhere so i think the best thing to do from it is actually every time you fail at something take think of a positive think of a silver lining and be like this is a like you know not necessarily positive but think of something that you've learned from it for example i 
forgot to sign a contract and then a brand cancelled their work with me because they're like oh you didn't sign the contract soon enough upsetting because I haven't like it was so small and so p petty but I've learned to just get my shit together and sign contracts sooner that's a takeaway from it like it's a small thing like I know I can be quite lazy when it comes to getting contracts signed so things like that it's just you have to take away things like that and that's something that I still need to keep reminding myself even now in my late 20s anyway guys I hope you find this video useful uh, I hope I haven't waffled on too much I'm gonna try and cut off now because the bin men are outside and it's getting a little bit noisy out there so um, thank you so much for watching please subscribe and comment or DM me at sophiemilner underscore fs if you have any questions and definitely tune in to my Sunday night Q&A on UK time on Instagram stories because there actually is becoming a really nice community Community there where people are talking and sharing issues and things like that so uh, yeah and I hope we see you guys again in the next video bye